Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about some Japanese inner beauty habits for glowing skin. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel doroku shatte kudasai. As most of you probably already know, I mean, I hope so at this point, but I am technically speaking Japanese. I was born in Japan and my mom is Japanese, or well, I guess I'm half Japanese because I'm also Aussie, but there are parts of my lifestyle and beauty habits that are obviously influenced by Japanese culture. And a big thing in the Japanese kind of beauty and health um, culture is something called inner beauty, which I feel like the phrase means something completely different in English. Inner beauty usually means someone who is beautiful on the inside in terms of their personality whereas in Japan it literally means the physical beauty of your insides i.e what you consume to build a beautiful body obviously there are an array of different things that can affect your skin from hormones to genetics to the environment and so on although your diet and what you consume on the daily can have a huge impact on this too and i have had quite a few of you guys question in the past and also recently on my eating habits and stuff I do for kind of inner health that can help my skin but I thought I would share my tips and kind of daily habits that I try to incorporate to support healthy skin. First things first let's talk about Food. Something that we will be talking about a fair bit in this video is stomach or gut health. No matter what article you read on Japanese health and beauty sites, or whenever they talk about inner beauty or skin health, it always leads back to gut health. So creating a good environment in your stomach is an important link to preventing things like breakouts and retaining healthy glowing skin. I know we all know in general that healthier foods like vegetables, fruits and fish and grains and stuff versus fats and sugars and processed processed food is going to be better for our overall health as well as stomach and skin health so I'm not going to get into that because that's something we learn in like you know grade school or whatever you call it but a type of food that we Japanese love for our stomachs as well as many other health benefits is hakko shokuhin. Hakko shokuhin translates to fermented foods which if you're not used to it can honestly sound kind of icky but I do feel like fermented ingredients have especially grown in popularity in the last few years in the skincare industry so hopefully more people are now open to the idea of consuming it as well. So there are a number of reasons to why fermented foods are recommended so highly in the Japanese diet. One, it can be more nutritional so by fermenting the ingredient you can actually increase the nutritional value of that food. If we take soybeans for example the vitamin B2 found in soybeans actually increases 10 times the amount when it has been fermented into natto. natto. Number two, easy for our body to absorb like skincare as well by breaking down the ingredient and fermenting it it actually makes it easier for our body to absorb that nutrition number three is that it can boost beneficial bacteria in our gut also known as probiotics it can improve our digestion increase our immunity and also even support weight loss and number four it can have anti-aging benefits fermented foods are also often high in antioxidants which can support slower aging and a bunch of other stuff as well yeah there are a bunch of benefits so I'm going to be introducing a few food products that I basically consistently have in the house and consume on the daily. First, we have natto. I mentioned this earlier, but if you have never heard of natto, it is fermented soybeans. And if you have never tried natto, it may come to a little bit of a shock to you, but it could be described as slimy, sticky, stinky beans. I have eaten it since I was teeny tiny like I literally cannot remember when I first tried natto from when I was an absolute baby but it is one of my favorite things to eat with rice. They usually come in a pack of three or four and contains a little sachet of like a soy based tare as well as karashi which is basically Japanese mustard. Before eating it you mix it with the tare and karashi if you want to and it is generally eaten on top of rice. In Japan they are so cheap like you can usually get a pack of three for like 70 to 80 yen. I'm pretty sure that converts to like 50 cents in American dollars. Here in Australia, it does cost a little bit more. It's usually three to four dollars for a pack at my local um, Asian grocer. If you have never tried it, you have definitely got to ease in. It's something that if you didn't eat it from a young age, it's quite challenging to get used to. Although Logan only ate it like for the first time since meeting me, so a few years ago, and he absolutely loves it. It's not for everyone, but I absolutely love it and could eat natto on gohan every single day for the rest of my life. Next, we have 
kimchi. This is obviously not Japanese but Korean, although something that I eat just as much if not more than natto. I'm sure most of you know what kimchi is already, but basically it is pickled cabbage usually or other vegetables in a spicy sauce. The great thing about kimchi compared to natto is how versatile it is. You can eat it as a side dish known as banchan in Korean, which is the most common way to eat it, or you can add it to dishes as an ingredient like in dumplings or fried rice. Kimchi is pretty accessible here in Australia compared to natto and I feel like it would probably be the same situation for a lot of other countries. Kimchi also differs a fair bit in flavor depending on the brand. I noticed when I visited Korea that each restaurant had like a different flavor of kimchi and it was ugh amazing. I can't wait to go visit again. So I do recommend trying out different ones until you find your favorite. Next I have miso and soy sauce. These are condiments but honestly at least one if not both are consumed on the daily in Japan. They are both made of fermented soybeans. Yes, Japanese people absolutely love their soybeans and they are often used to flavor Japanese cuisine. The most common way miso is consumed is through miso shiru, also known as miso soup. This is literally one of the easiest things to make and a great addition to any meal with rice. And they even call it um, nomu biyoeki in Japan, which translates to basically like a beauty serum to drink. And they do often recommend to drink it every single day for its health benefits. Traditionally speaking, you are supposed to um, extract dashi from either kombu, which is like seaweed, or um, bonito, like dried fish, to get the depth of flavor in miso shiru. But I just buy the miso that already has dashi included in it called dashi miso because I am a super lazy gal. Although in Japan, they have such a wide variety of miso from shiro miso, akamiso, awase miso. So if you do have the opportunity to try a different variety or different types of miso, I highly recommend it. The simplest miso shiro recipe that I often do is to boil water, add um, sliced onions and dried seaweed. Once the ingredients are cooked, turn off the heat and add your miso. And if you want, you can add add um, tofu, it's a nice little addition, but reheat it and serve. It's as easy as that. Another good thing about miso shiru is that you can essentially add like anything you want. I often like to add um, cabbage or pumpkin to make it a bit more of a sweeter flavor or it is a good way to just get rid of kind of leftover veggies and stuff you might have in your fridge. And soy sauce is pretty self-explanatory. You can use it to flavor your dishes or use it to dip your dumplings or sushi in and whatnot. I do know some of these fermented ingredients are probably hard for some people to consume since they do have let's say a foreign flavor profile and also can be hard to access. So I do also have a drink option next to taking your fermented nutrients. Now let's move on to drinks. So the first one I have is called Koso. So a little history on myself. Um, I always had a pretty strong stomach growing up. I could eat literally whatever, whenever and never had issues. Although the last couple of years, possibly due to my age, who knows? I have had some stomach and digestive issues where I often feel bloated or even get an upset stomach, which is something that I have had to learn to adjust to. And just eating those foods mentioned earlier hasn't always been enough. So something that I have more recently started incorporating for my gut health, which of course leads to skin health, is so the word corso directly translates to say a enzyme or ferment in English. So in Japan they do have these things called corso dorink where they ferment ingredients such as vegetables, fruits and herbs over a period of time to basically make like a concentrated superfood drink. Originally they used to make this for people who didn't have access to a nutrient full diet to be able to consume it in an easy form. It again combines those probiotics, postbiotics and prebiotics to improve your gut health and to also help your immunity too. So the Corsa drink that I have been taking recently is the Ars Corso Postbiotic Drink who are also sponsoring this segment of the video. Ars Corso is made in Japan from a hundred types, I'm pretty sure it's a hundred types, oh a hundred plus types of vegetables, fruits and plants through a one-year fermentation process making it gluten-free and vegan friendly as well. Yes you can totally take it as a cleanse although from past experience it was quite 
quite hard for me to maintain. So I personally have been taking it daily in place of my breakfast to add those benefits of Corso to my diet. And honestly, it has been great. This is actually my second bottle. I emptied my first one and I am almost halfway through my second one and I actually missed it a lot when I ran out of my first one. The biggest difference I found was that I experienced way less bloating and TMI, but gas. Um, <laughs> I burp a lot and Logan, my partner, can attest to that. I had way less stomach issues and also another TMI, but a much nicer time in the bathroom. <laughs> another thing is that I am usually a coffee first thing in the morning person. Like I can't get up without my coffee. So I was a little worried of how I would function with this instead of my coffee. But surprisingly, I actually felt like I had more clarity and was quite productive in the morning. Even with taking it just once a day, I did see the benefits. So imagine doing like a full three day cleanse. I have read that people experienced weight loss or even had skin issues like eczema or psoriasis even clear up from it, which is crazy. They do recommend drinking 30 mils mixed with half a glass of sparkling water. It is supposed to taste like um, plum juice, which I personally don't, I guess I don't really know what plum juice tastes like, but regardless, it does taste pretty good. And it is definitely easier to consume than say natto or kimchi if you're not used to them. Although it is made in Japan, it is actually distributed from the US. So they do have international shipping and have free shipping within the US as well. Once again, it is a great option, especially if you don't have access to those foods that I mentioned earlier. I will leave the link in the description and you can use my code TINA10 to get 10% off if you do decide to take on the gut challenge. I'm just kidding, it's not a challenge at all, but it is definitely good for you. And another drink that Japanese people and I myself drink on the daily is green tea. Literally, I was supposed to keep this tea for like this segment of the video, but I've obviously just sipped it while I've been filming. <laughs> I religiously drink green tea pretty much every day, like nine out of 10 days, I will usually drink at least a cup of green tea. I do think by now we all know the benefits of green tea. Number one being that it is really rich in antioxidants. That is why we love it in skincare, but it does amazing things when you consume it daily as well. Also try to get the Japanese green tea. Whenever I tried to get green tea in stores here in Australia, I was always so confused to why it was brown once brewed like this is obviously green beautiful green and it tastes so much better as well the best deal i can get here in australia is getting a bulk box at costco for these green teas it is kirkland but it is ethoin so it tastes very very good it also has i'm pretty sure it has matcha yeah matcha iri yokcha. it's like 16 or 17 dollars for a pack of a hundred which is so much cheaper than buying it at like coles or woolies because i'm pretty sure it's like 16 dollars for like 20 of them so yeah that's where i get my green tea in australia lastly we are going to talk about supplements i have had many many questions from you guys in the past on what supplements i take daily so i thought why not include it in this video obviously it is not specifically Japanese but something that I definitely become more conscious about in the last few years I never used to take vitamins religiously and it's not necessarily like a must do in Japanese culture as well mainly because people do get all of their necessary vitamins through their diet you should see how well I was fed when I was living with my grandparents in Japan the variety of food I ate throughout the week and the amount and the weight well-balancedness like I never took it for granted but at the same time I don't think I knew how good I had it with my grandma's cooking every single day <laughs> on that note it is not always easy for us to have such a well-balanced diet especially if we are busy with work or can't cook every day at home so that is when supplementary things like supplements and vitamins can help our inner beauty balance so the vitamins and supplements I try to take on the daily Ah, fish oil since we don't eat as much fish as we would like to. Vitamin C, obviously a must have for skin internally and externally. Vitamin D, since my doctor said I was low the last time I had a blood test. <laughs> Hair, skin and nails, mainly for my nails since they are weak. Collagen on and off for my skin and also a multivitamin to fill those gaps. So me and Logan just divide these into daily um, pill cases to make it easier for us to take. I totally forgot to take last night's and this morning's, but that's okay.
Vitamins are again super personal like skincare so it is a bit of trial and error to see what works well with your body. For example I went through like three to four four different brands or types of hair, skin and nails until I um, landed on this one. I feel like have really helped my nails. Like, I mean, I started doing gel nails, but like look how long they are now and they haven't broken. I like this one. Generally speaking, we get most of our vitamins off of iHerb just cause it's cheap. So we usually do one order every few months and get free shipping and just get it all at once. But we do get a couple from just our local um, pharmacy as well. I will leave all of the ones that I take in the description if you do want it as reference or if you want to try I'm out but once again as I said it might not be the best one for you or I do recommend trialing different brands to see what works best. In terms of collagen just because you guys have asked a lot in the past and are really curious I can't really say I can pinpoint the exact one that has made a big difference because I do feel like it takes a few months for you to even notice the difference of collagen. Personally I felt like it made my skin more resilient and also able to kind of heal quicker like scars and stuff and it also helps with kind of like the bounciness and elasticity of my skin too. I will again um, link the ones that, that I enjoyed the most, mostly based on flavor. But the ones that I kept the packaging, which obviously meant I liked were these three. They are all Korean, so it's probably going to be hard to find online, but I'll link them if I can find them. And um, if you do want kind of like a cheaper, easier to access alternative, the I have one, it's cheap. It's got lots of reviews saying people love it. Um, although it does taste a little bit interesting. So usually I, um, mix it into like a shake or something to make it easier to use. Take. I will also note that it's only like this week that me and Logan switched back to taking our regular vitamins because we had actually been taking the Goalie Nutrition gummies for the past month or so now. You may have seen me mention them on Instagram and honestly they have just been a absolute joy to take. <laughs> Initially I was going to take my regular vitamins on top of these but Logan said that the Goalie gummies depending on which ones you get they basically included everything that we were taking in our daily vitamins anyway so we just switched to taking these only. Not gonna lie they can seem a little bit expensive but I have realized that they do kind of like crazy sales like 40 to 50% off fairly often so if you are curious I'd recommend just keeping an eye out. I do have a permanent code with them Tina TH if you do want to use it this is not sponsored or anything it's just that Logan especially has been enjoying taking them. His favorites are ashwagandha for helping relax and then also melatonin we actually don't have it here because we've been taking it um before bed every night. What you got there? Gully. Gully. Gully G Willikas. Oh Gully. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one for you, I got it. Ooh. Yummers. I feel like you're filming. He used to take melatonin anyway, so we've been taking it in a gummy form and it's been like such a nice little treat before we go to bed. <laughs> My favorites are Superfruit since it helps um, glowing skin and then also um, the ACV apple cider vinegar because it can help aid weight loss. <laughs> I haven't taken my super greens today. Mm. Basically, they're just yummy and a way easy to take vitamins, especially if you're... Sorry, I'm like speaking with my mouth full. But yeah, if you have trouble like swallowing pills, obviously it's way easier. And then also for kids as well, it's going to be way easier to take. Well, I hope you enjoyed my Japanese inner beauty habits for glowing skin. I know it was definitely a different um, type of video where I actually wasn't talking about skincare, skincare for once, but it's still kind of, you know, for your skin. Please let me know what kind of content you want to see that is not directly skincare related. I was thinking about doing like a um, what I eat in a week. I know it's like super cliche, but yeah, um, let me know what you thought of this video and any video ideas you've got. I have selected two other videos um, for you guys to check out after this one if you want to, because it'll support me. And I guess I'll cheers with some green tea and see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mwah.